Finn, the Fang Bearer, Kaldheim Brawl Deck. Hey everyone, it's VM Campos, Magic Fan. I've got a brand new Brawl Deck Tech video for you from the latest and greatest magic set, Kaldheim. And so I've got a mono green deck that's pretty fun. The Brawl Mander is Finn the Fang Bearer, so it's all about death touch and cool stuff like that. I hope you like the deck. Head on over to patreon.com slash vmcampos and join up for some cool rewards and such. Or get the full deck list for free there. Now let's get on with the deck. All right, so I've got my arena account set up right here. As of this video, the arena open is about to start. So obviously when you see this video later in the future, I will have taken part in that and yes, won $2,000. Maybe. Let's check out the deck. Now the big idea with this deck is that we've got Death Touch shenanigans going on. To be honest, being in mono green does limit a few things. If we go with green black, we have more Death Touch shenanigans, but we don't have Finn as a guaranteed commander to make things happen, so we can do fine with mono green. The star of the show is Finn the Fangbearer, two mana for a 1-3 legendary creature human warrior with Death Touch. So no creatures are going to want to stand in his way when he attacks because Death Touch kills everything. And now what happens when they don't block? Whenever a creature you control with Death Touch deals combat damage to a player, that player gets two poison counters. Poison is a mechanic that's really old from way back in the old days of magic, literally 25 years ago. And basically when you have 10 poison counters, you lose the game, no matter your life total. Now what's very interesting is that they brought back poison and they made it even more deadly because Finn will give them two poison counters. So five hits from Finn, five damage from Finn, and they're dead. Now wait a minute, when any of your death touch creatures deals damage, they gain two poison for each creature. This can, very, this can be a very OP deck, even with our limited number of death touchers, but I've got solutions for that. So let's see what the rest of the, the deck is about. I've got Tormod's Crypt, a zero mana cost artifact to wipe out their graveyards. Graveyard shenanigans is very popular on Brawl, so let's get rid of it for zero mana. Blizzard Brawl, one green mana, makes your creature fight another creature, so that means they deal damage to each other. Now, if you paid snow mana into it, it makes your creature indestructible, and spoiler alert, the mana base is snow base, so it's gonna make your creature indestructible, fight their creature, your death touch creature's gonna take down their creature no problem for only one green mana, that's amazing. We've got the elven bow for one green mana. Equipment is part of this deck as well, as we will see here. This is sort of like the reprinting of living weapon, uh, sort of effect. Basically, you pay some mana and pay extra mana, and then you also get a token to equip this equipment. If you don't have the extra mana for that, you just equip it to your regular creature. When this enters, pay two extra, and if you cre if you do that, you create a one one green elf, and attach this automatically. So then you get a two three creature if you pay three in total. If you don't, you just get the equipment turn one, and then later on you can equip. Okay, Moss Viper, here's the first Death Touch creature. One green man, you get a 1-1 one, one Death Touch. So here's the perfect play. Turn one, Forest, Moss Viper. Turn two, Finn, attack. They probably won't have a blocker, and they're already gonna get two poison counters out of the Viper. If they still haven't set up their board state on the second turn, Finn is ready to attack on the third turn. Two Death Touch creatures attack. They get four poison counters, plus the two that was already there. Six poison counters. They're probably gonna auto-concede at that point. Or the Tajuro Blight Blade, same thing, one green, one one, death touch, same sort of thing. Get these out as soon as possible. The opponent's not going to want to block them. They're probably not going to fully read what Finn does. I've had that happen so many times. They don't really read what's going on, and I don't want my creature to get death touch, so I'll let it go through. Whoops, poison, I'm almost dead. Elvish War Master. Okay, so the sub-theme of this deck is also elves. Uh, poison is the main thing, Death Touch. Then we've got Equipment and also Elves. That's like the big idea with this deck. So Elvish War Master, 2 mana, 2-2, two, two. it's an Elf Warrior. Whenever one or more other Elves enter the battlefield under your control, create another Elf. You can only do it once per turn. Then later, 7 mana, all your Elves gain plus 2, plus 2, and gain Death Touch. So there's a bunch of Elves in this deck, they can all get the plus 2, plus 2, they can all get Death Touch and put the final bit of damage 
when Finn is on the board as well. Rabbit Bite. There's a lot of these bite or fight effects in this deck because even your little 1-1 one, one death touch creature will fell their big creatures. So at a sorcery speed, two mana to a creature you control deals damage equal to another creature. So it's just one bit of damage directly from your creature to their creature. Rabbit Bite, death touch, even the strongest creature gets killed. Amazing. Ram through. Similar. Two mana. Instant. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to one you don't control. And then there's um, trample damage going on here. So if you've got a big creature dealing damage to one of the little creatures, some of that goes through. And if that hits forward past that, that's also more of that poison damage going through. Great for a combat trick as well. You can attack. They don't block, but still ram through and take out the creature that didn't block and you do your damage. Very mean. Return to nature to destroy a variety of annoying artifacts or enchantments, or to exile stuff from the graveyard. Once again, Uro, get out of here. Kroxa, get out of here. Whatever graveyard shenanigans. Return them to nature. Wildborn Preserver. I always think that the main card here is this cute little fox, but it's actually an elf behind it. When oh, I just saw one more thing, there's like a there's like a carrot, like an angel or a something, a, a fairy or something on behind that tree. I, I never actually noticed that. Anyway, two mana, two two. It's got flash and reach, so flash it in when they when they attack with their one one, thinking you've got shields down. Take them out. It's got reach. People forget about that that it can swat things out of the air. And then this is pretty interesting here. Whenever another non-human creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay X. When you do, put X one one counters on this. So it's such a low cost creature, and then bring in another low cost creature, and you've got mana left over. You can easily turn this into a six six seven seven, no problem. Turn after turn if you've got the mana. Arcane Signet, of course, to ramp your mana. More mana versus your opponent is more good. Mirror Shield. So our creatures are all about death touch. And people forget that the Mirror Shield negates the opponent's death touch. Read it right here. Equip creature gets plus zero, plus two, and has hex proof. And whatever a creature with death touch blocks or becomes blocked by this creature, destroy that creature. People forget that all the time. The attack with their questing beast, and then you just bounce it back right to them, and the questing beast is dead completely, and they, and they rage quit. Raven Wings, two mana, equipped for two, give a creature plus one and fly, and it becomes also a bird. This is going to be great to do that evasion, get that final bit of death touch in the air to get those poison counters added up. Relic X, two mana, auto equip it to any one of your creatures. If it's a warrior, it gets plus two, plus one. Just make your creature bigger and scarier, have the opponent less likely to block, get that poison through easily. Boreal Art Rider, I love this one. Three mana, three two, snow creature, elf warrior. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if snow, of any of that spell's color was spent to cast it, that creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one. So the whole mana base is snow. You're definitely going to pay snow for when you summon a creature, and the creature automatically gets plus one, plus one. Fierce Empath. Three mana. This is one of the weirdest looking elves I've seen. Uh, it's from the older days of magic before the style guide really kicked in, I guess. You get a one, one elf. But whenever this enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost of six or greater, reveal it, put it into your hand. So go get the big things out of this deck when you get this little guy out. Land of War Visionary, three mana, two, two, tap it for a green mana, and it draws you a card. Amazing. Tajuro Snarecaster, three mana, one, four with reach. So it's going to block a bunch of their flyers with this big butt that this uh, Snarecaster has. And if you activate the Death Touch aspect, such as with the Elvish War Master, even better. Bloodline Pretender, the Honorary Elf. It's a 3-mana 2-2 two, two Shapeshifter, which which is uh, which has Changeling, which means this is every creature type, so it's also an elf. As this enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Obviously, we'll choose Eldrazi, or elf. And whenever another creature of the chosen type enters the battlefield under your control, this gets a plus 1. So this can get bigger and bigger as more elves come in, simply for it wanting to hang out with the rest of the elves. Heraldic Banner, another mana rock. Choose a color, green. All your green creatures get plus 1, plus 0, and it taps for another mana. Replicating Ring. I love this card. It's one of the newest mana rocks from Kaldheim. Three mana. Tap it to give you any color. It's also a snow artifact, so it gives you snow mana. Then every turn you put a counter on it. Once you've got eight counters, this replicates itself into eight more of the same mana rocks. So suddenly you have nine mana after eight turns. And Brawl, since it's a slower sort of format, you'll definitely get to that point. The old replicating type of artifact was the Skyclave Relic. Pay three mana, you get an artifact that's indestructible that then uh, taps for any color. If, however, you kick it for three more, so six in total, it comes in with two of those extra tokens. They come in tap, but then you've got three mana in total for that six. Plus one of them is indestructible. Canopy Technician, four mana, three, three. Your other elves get plus one, plus one. So a great Lord card plus tap it to give you triple green. What? 
Elderleaf Mentor, 4 mana, 3, 2. Now, to be honest, I always confuse the art of this one in my hand, the Elderleaf Mentor, with the Elvish Warmaster. I kind of feel their poses are very similar, so be careful which of the two you have in hand. The Elderleaf Mentor. When this enters, it also brings a another elf friend. So two things would enter at the same time out of the outlay for one creature. Hunter's Edge, here's another one of these fight effects. Put a plus one counter on target creature you control, then a creature deals damage equal to another creature you don't control. So it's just one way damage plus makes your creature stronger. Jogara Visionary, four mana, three, two. When it enters, draw a card. Very cool art on this one. I like how it's so monochromatic. Okane Adversary, four mana for a two, three that actually can come in as two mana if the opponent controls a green permanent. Now remember, lands are not colored, even though they give colored mana, so those don't count. They have to have a green permanent on the battlefield. Then you get a cost reduction of two. You get a death touch creature, and when this deals damage to a player, draw a card. So we've got a little bit of card draw in this deck, and one of them is when the Okame adversary deals damage, draw a card. Ornery Dilophosaur. This is another honorary elf. It's a dinosaur. It's a 2-2 two -two with death touch. And whenever this attacks, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, this gets plus 2 plus 2. So it can become a 4-4, four four, but who cares? It's a death touch creature. It helps Finn's strategy, so get on the squad. Out Muscle. This is one of the most epic fight spells ever. 4 mana. Sorcery. Put a plus 1 counter on your creature. Then it fights another creature if you adamanted it, which means you paid all of the mana in the same color green mana in this case, three mana, the creature you control is indestructible. So obviously you're going to easily be able to give your creature indestructibility, because obviously it's going to be wrestling bears. So for four mana you'll be able to take down their creature and yours will live. Circle for Skemfar, same sort of thing, four mana, put a plus one counter on yours, then it fights another creature that you don't control. This is one of these new fangled foretell cards. So on turn two you could put it away in the exile zone so that the opponent doesn't know what you have, and then later on for one green mana you can play this, and your death touch creature will take down their creature. We've got more card draw here in Toski, Bearer of Secrets, four mana for a one one. It's a legendary creature, Squirrel. It's indestructible. This cannot be countered. It must attack every turn. It's kind of rabid. And whenever any of your creatures, you can roll those combat damage. So a player draw a card. For every creature, you draw a card. All your creatures are death touch. Your opponent's not going to want to block them. You're going to draw so many cards off of it. And even more importantly, you're going to have that poison happening every time they don't block. Questing Beast, good old Questing Beast, one of the best creatures ever printed in Magic. Four mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Legendary creature, Beast. Vigilance, Death Touch, Haste. Cannot be blocked by small creatures. Combat damage will be dealt to creatures you control. Cannot be prevented. Whenever Questing Beast deals damage to an opponent, it deals that much damage to target Planeswalker. So it can do up to four damage to a Planeswalker if it goes unblocked. Such a good card. And then lastly, we've got the Thorn Mammoth. This is the 6-6 six, six creature with Trample that as soon as it gets summoned, it battles one of the opponent's creatures. And then every time something else gets summoned, it will also deal the damage. Really fun. And lastly, the land base. We've got eight of the forests from Kaldheim. And then we've got nine of the snow covered in one of the arts, and then nine in the other art. Obviously, if you just go all snow, the couple of snow things here will definitely go off, but I want to mess with my opponent by having different mana arts. So that's the deck. What do you think? Is Finn going to bear his fangs? and take out the opponent faster than they could have even fathomed. I've played so many versions of this deck where the opponent just rage quits as soon as they realize what's going on. Again, turn one death touch creature, turn two Finn, they cannot block that death touch creature, they start to gain poison and they realize, oh, I'm dead in four turns. And there's been several opponents that think, okay, no problem, I'm going to hold them off, they won't poison me. And then we have these fight or bite spells where the where my creature deals the, the damage to their creature death touch, they clear the board and still do the damage, and then they rage quit. So this can be a pretty fun, over-the-top sort of deck if you play your cards right. Tell me how you'd improve the deck, tell me in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Consider going over to the Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcompost. You'll get the deck list completely for free right there. But while you're there, consider following for free on Patreon to be alerted to everything that I do regarding magic, comic books, and all the cool stuff that I do. And if you really like what I do, perhaps consider pledging. Starting at $1, you'll unlock exclusive stuff. You'll also show me that you appreciate my work, and that's really cool. Every time I get that email from Patreon that a brand new person has joined the VMC crew, my heart elates. Consider going to the $2 range while I'll actually mail you some vintage cards in appreciation 
for joining the VMC crew. Or again, if not, just simply follow for free on Patreon. This has been VM Campos, and I'll see you on Kaldheim.